All right. Good morning, everyone. I think it's time for us to start and to officially open um, our event uh, today. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, well, let me warmly welcome you to the information session on consultations on the framework for evaluating the effectiveness of the convention. Effectiveness evaluation is uh, one of the agenda items uh, of the fourth meeting of the Conference of the Parties. And the online segment of the fourth meeting, uh, held over a month ago, opened this agenda and began discussing it. Secretariat introduced documents on effectiveness evaluation submitted to the meeting. Parties exchanged their initial views and comments, and a conference room paper was brought forward by two parties, Canada and Norway, during the meeting. The second segment of the COP is, to, is planned to be held in person on 21st to 25th of March in Bali, Indonesia, as decided by the online segment of COP4. It will resume the discussion of the effectiveness evaluation. As expressed by parties uh, through the Bureau and also at the COP4 meeting, it is so important that the second segment of uh, our COP is held in person, as this format of the meeting will allow to fully negotiate and advance on important items on the agenda, such as effectiveness evaluation. Based on the current situation related to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Secretariat and Indonesia are advancing preparations for the in-person meeting an invitation to COP 4.2 will be circulated to parties and observers uh, shortly. I hope during the next three months, uh, the situation related to the pandemic will be stable and even improve. Having COP in two parts is an extraordinary situation, but it also presents an opportunity, and that is an additional time for parties to consider documents submitted to the meeting and carry out consultations. And I'm glad COP 4.1 sees this opportunity as far as effectiveness evaluation is concerned and agreed to hold intersessional consultations we are launching today. More specifically, COP 4.1 concluded that it would be worthwhile pursuing discussions on issues on which consensus had yet to be reached to help avoid delay and ensure that the deadline for establishment of the first effectiveness evaluation could be met. To this end, uh, COP agreed, this, agreed that the Secretariat would invite written comments on the framework and arrange an online session to enable parties to exchange views. In a nutshell, the consultation could help the parties to prepare for discussion and an agreement on this agenda item at the upcoming COP4 meeting. I'm pleased to see many parties as well as observers attending today. I would like to encourage your active engagement in the consultation. Uh, and while the Secretariat has proposed a plan on how the consultation could be carried out, it would be extremely useful to hear from you during today your ideas, suggestions and views on the next or additional steps in the consultation and have, and have your views also how you envisage it could become a stepping stone to the successful outcome of COP 4.2, a goal that we all share. With that, let me conclude my opening remarks and invite Claudia Tenhave, Senior Policy and Coordination Officer at the Secretariat to guide us through the session. So thank you so much and over to you, Claudia. Thank you very much, Monica. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you today and to see so many uh, names popping up. Um, thank you for being with us today. Um, just as a matter of housekeeping, um, if there are items you would like to raise immediately, fe please feel free to record them in the chat. And as I progress through the presentation, I may try to address some of those questions or I will return to them uh, during the, the session on questions and answers. Um, but with that, let me turn uh, to the first slide um and also to make one more housekeeping announcement which is that we will be recording this session as a number of uh, parties had indicated that uh, they would like to have access to the recording of the session uh, so we hope this is in order with you as well um, uh, it will be made available afterwards as will of course our presentation so with that let me give you an overview of how the information session is organized um, we suggest to go through five steps. 
uh, first to recall what COP4 item 4.1, which is the one for I, which is the one on effectiveness evaluation, is all about and what COP4 uh, is set to look at. Secondly, to look at the outcome of the discussions at COP4.1, um, namely uh, the outcome being to hold consultations on the framework for evaluating the effectiveness of the convention in preparation for parties and stakeholders meeting in Bali next year, March for COP 4.2. Thirdly, we would present the plan of work for the consultation as outlined in the Executive Secretary notification of last week. And then fourth, go a little bit in depth into uh, unpacking what it means to give effect to Article 22 and specifically to recall the progress made thus far and the remaining areas of work. The documents that um, serve as background or uh, input for this are well known to many of you. The first is the document prepared by the Secretariat 418, uh, the overall document for this agenda item, and given the outcome of 4.1, there is also a CRP, which I'll speak to a little bit later. CRP is uh, uh, on the framework for the first effectiveness evaluation as was proposed by Norway and Canada. And then we turn to the part that Monica just outlined, which is the very important part of having your comments, reflections, or any contributions you can already make uh, towards the um, launch of the discussion, uh, launch of the consultation on the framework, but also on any comments or reflections that you may want to share either here today or later directly with the Secretariat on how to conduct the consultations and what will be helpful to you in this regard. With that, may I launch into uh, the first part, which is to recall COP4, Agenda Item 4.1. And as I see so many familiar faces, both parties and stakeholders, so many familiar names, um, I know that you have seen this and my next slide many times before, as they are the outlines of the agenda item before COP4. On the left-hand side, you see the uh, documents that have been prepared for the agenda item on effectiveness namely 418, the overview, uh, supported by two ad documents, one on indicators and one on guidance on monitoring of mercury and mercury compounds to support the effectiveness evaluation of the convention, the executive summary of which, and then also three INF documents. Firstly, a compilation of views on the proposed indicators, secondly, guidance, and thirdly, uh, a supplemental information document. But let me recall why is the COP working on effectiveness evaluation in the first place? And it is contained in Article 22, Paragraph 1, in that the Minamata Convention text stipulates that the Conference of the Parties is to evaluate the effectiveness of the Convention beginning no later than six years after the date of entry into force uh, of the Convention and periodically thereafter. And such, if you would like to uh, look deeper into this particular part, please also read perhaps the remaining articles, uh, the remaining paragraphs of that article. With this in mind, at COP3, a particular decision was taken by the Conference of the Parties, namely uh, entitled Arrangements for the First Effectiveness Evaluation of the Minamata Convention, and that is Decision 310, which is available, of course, on our website and through also this presentation. So let me first say that for COP4, um, in, and as contained in Decision 310, um, this is about uh, reporting on the progress of the work that had been requested through Decision 310, and the work uh, of that work is uh, about firstly indicators, the drafting the guidance, and also advancing the drafting of the Article 21 synthesis report, and lastly advancing the drafting of the trade supply and demand report. Moving on to the next slide. The approach, given this uh, unusual situation of not having been able to meet in person last year, was that at COP 4.1, the online section, uh, the online segment, the agenda item would be opened and the documents that have been prepared as requested would be presented. And this happened in plenary on Monday, the 1st of November, the documents were presented. 
at that time. And as you may recall, if you were able to join us, um, there was also the president also recalled that there was a party led process, a uh, consultation process that had worked intercessionally. And uh, it was given the opportunity to also report to COP 4.1 uh, on its uh, work. Furthermore, the approach in this two part series was that in COP 4.2, uh, it is to resume the agenda item of effectiveness evaluation, consider the documents that have been prepared and any other information that the conference of the parties foresees necessary important uh, to its work uh, on effectiveness evaluation. So with this as background, let me move into uh, the outcome of COP 4.1 and that's the next slide. You will be able to access the meeting report of COP 4.1. The meeting will be able to access the meeting report of COP 4.1. The meeting report is a uh, report is uh, document 428 um, and it ought to be uploaded today, if not tomorrow. So please check on the meeting report and let me present here what is in the meeting report as also uh, was uh, presented on the last day during the adoption of the meeting report on the 5th of November. Firstly, during this agenda item, the Secretariat presented the work that was done intercessionally as mandated by the decision. The Secretariat also presented an overview that's contained in the document 418 uh, of work mandated and done since COP1 on effectiveness evaluation as well as the remaining areas of work needed for the COP to put in place the framework and arrangements to conduct the first effectiveness evaluation. Then, as mentioned a moment ago, the president recalled that some parties had initiated informal consultations um, on items <clears throat> that remained unresolved at COP3 and which had not been subject to the work going on under decision 310. These informal consultations were presented and were thus brought forward to the COP at COP 4.1 in the form of the conference um, room paper one. Moving to the next slide. Following the discussion on the broader agenda of effectiveness evaluation and specifically on the paper being brought forward, there was general consensus that it was worthwhile pursuing discussions on issues on which consensus has yet to be reached to help avoid delays and ensure that the deadline for the establishment of the first effectiveness evaluation could be met. The Secretariat informed that uh, it would be in a position to invite written statements, written comments on the framework and also arrange an online session to enable parties to exchange views thereon in preparation for the resumed fourth meeting in March next year. And thus, the conference agreed to holding of intercessional consultations in this manner, and therefore we are here together on the first part of this in form of an information session. The plan of work. As outlined in the, effect, in the executive secretary's letter last week, a four step plan of work has been proposed by the Secretariat uh, to support consultations on the framework. Today is the first step in, in the form of this online information session. Um, the next step would be the preparation of the written comments to be delivered, submitted to us by the 20th of January next year. Thereafter, on the basis of these written comments, uh, parties and others would be invited to an online consultation session in the latter part of, Ju of January. And following all of that, uh, in February, the Secretariat would be compiling the comments and inputs received uh, to support the ongoing discussions for COP 4.2. I have another slide to give it to give this plan of work to you in an overview of a calendar. That is in November, COP 4.1 came together and um, decided to go uh, forth with such a consultation. Thus in December, we now have this online session and the beginning of preparation, if not already done so, as m some of you have already been doing, um, of such comments. January would see the deadline for those comments. And then of course, the important part of the online consultation amongst parties. 
in February would be the compilation of all of that. And let me also point out, February is quite a busy month because we also have the regional preparatory meetings. And of course, if there's input, it would be our hope as the Secretariat for this to be available already to regional preparatory meetings at the time of their meeting. And then in March, we would hopefully all come together in Bali, Indonesia, and then the item will be opened, will be resumed, I beg your pardon, to consider the documents, and the COP may also draw on the consultations agreed to at COP 4.1. With this as background, let me try to go a bit deeper into giving effect to Article 22 and recall where the mandates come from. Um, all of this is outlined in the document 418, so um, much of it will be very familiar to many of you, but if you would like to reread it uh, quietly afterwards, again, please just go to this particular document. But in a nutshell, there has been much, much work on effectiveness uh, evaluation of the Minamata Convention since its first COP in September 2017. The Conference of the Parties, Parties, the ad hoc technical expert group and the secretariat have undertaken various areas of work to give full effect to Article 22. Schematically, um, it's presented here. Uh, our convention came into force on the 16th of August 2017, and thus uh, Article 22 uh, came into um, being as, a, as valid, and then COP1 met not long afterwards and decided on decision 1-9. COP2 met the year after and the decision 2-10 on effectiveness. And then, two year, uh, and then COP3 uh, with decision 3-10. But under all of this runs this golden line, which is that the COP is to evaluate the effectiveness of the convention beginning no later than six years after the date of entry into force. And if you follow that line forward, six years after entry into force is 2023. And that is why the Conference of the Parties is uh, coming together at COP4 to uh, look at this matter, given the time urgency and given the importance of the matter to the convention. I would like to just point out that the technical expert group work between COP1 and 2 and between COP2 and 3. And of course, all the work of that expert group was reported respectively to COP2 and respectively to COP3 and is available in all the documents to those respective COPs as well. With that, the next slide takes you to the part in the document of 418 we would like to focus your attention on, which is the the table that um, has uh, three column, four columns, namely, firstly, the framework and the arrangements. Secondly, the convention text or COP decisions that give mandates for specific parts or items to do. Thirdly, notes on that item or, and or the progress made on that item. And then a concluding one, which is called remaining areas of work, because although much work has gone on since COP1 began work on effectiveness evaluation. There is still work to be concluded for Article 22 to be in effect. And here I would like to highlight, although there are more, um, more lines in the document and would like to invite you to look at that uh, as well, of course, but for our information session today, I would like to highlight two. Firstly, the effectiveness evaluation cycle because paragraph one of Article 22 uh, makes uh, the stipulation that within six years, the effectiveness evaluation is to begin, which means that it should begin by latest 15th of August, 2023. So what is the remaining area of work? Well, the COP will have to decide to begin the first effectiveness evaluation and further at which meeting it wishes to receive the report or reports that it requires in order to conduct and conclude on the first effectiveness evaluation. There is also the matter of the elements of the effectiveness evaluation framework, and this has been a matter of much time and much work and much consultation 
over the last years. And much of this can be seen in the mandates given in decision 1-9 and also the, the mandates given in decision 2-10. Um, and I can read you some of that those mandates, but they are all inside the document as well. But nine, uh, decision 1-9, for example, it includes identifying the steps required to undertake an effectiveness evaluation, suggesting a process flow or schedule for the effectiveness evaluation, identify arrangements for conducting the effectiveness evaluation, drafting terms of reference for the committee, developing the effectiveness evaluation, and assessing potential approaches to the indicators for the effectiveness evaluation. Much of that work was also sharpened and further uh, uh, reinforced through decision 210, where also um, the request was made to have a description of the effectiveness evaluation framework and further work on aspects of it, including the indicators. And as you can see in this particular diagram, it also included the request to work on establishing a committee to prepare the report for the COP. All of this um, uh, output or all of the information that was compiled and put together can be seen in terms of the report that was uh, prepared for COP3 um, as it uh, looks back on the outcomes and the work mandated by COP1 and 2. And following COP3 deliberations, you can find a decision 310 that sets out three areas of work for COP4. Thus, if we look again at the remaining areas of work, the COP has yet to conclude on the effectiveness evaluation framework, including the mandate in terms of reference of the evaluation committee, the approach on indicators and the steps and schedule of the effectiveness evaluation. Just like to point out here that one of the documents prepared for COP4 contains the work done intersessionally on indicators as requested in document 310. There is much more detail in this document, but uh, these are the main elements we would like to draw your attention to in terms of both work done, but also work remaining to conclude. Moving to the next slide. The document also concludes with a suggested action, which if I may read it out to you, in light of the requirement that the COP evaluates the effectiveness no later than six years after the entry into force, and based on the work done since COP1, COP4 may wish to, and there are a number of bullets here, but let me read you the first four. Consider beginning the first evaluation, set the meeting at which the first evaluation is to be concluded, consider establishing the effectiveness evaluation committee tasked with preparing the report for the COP and overseeing technical, scientific and technical work in this regard, Consider the indicators for evaluating the effectiveness of the convention based on the work done so far, and so on. Thus, moving on, there is much work that remains to be done, and not all of it was concluded at COP3. In this particular situation, and as I outlined earlier, and as described during deliberations at COP4.1, additional material was brought forward to the COP uh, to consider in this regard. And this is in the form of the CRP1, the conference room paper on the framework for the effectiveness evaluation. You can see dis displayed here the first summary paragraph and I shall read it to you. You will also see here a couple of pictorial aspects of the 10 page document that was put forward there's too much there then to explain to you or present all at once now, but I would like to draw your attention to uh, different parts of it for you to read uh, at, at whichever time you'd like. But let me just read out that the conference room paper put forward proposes a path forward to establish a framework and that it presents a draft decision and a proposed framework, which includes a structure, a process, a timeline, terms of reference for the committee, in terms of reference for a scientific advisory group. And the pictorials below are more or less the representations of these different aspects of uh, input that were developed in that informal process. 
Which brings us to why we are here together today, and that is the comments and reflections on the framework and uh, any questions that you may have or any items you would like to clarify as you begin your own work uh, on in this matter. And of course, also any comments or so that you may have on the actual uh, uh, deliberations of uh, or conduct of these consultations. To give you some kind of overall frame uh, on this task, which is not an easy task, um, please have a look at this particular slide in, in particular. After all, the request was for written comments for the consultations on the framework in preparation for the resumption of agenda item 4.1, 4i at COP uh, 4.2 in Bali. Um, and therefore, in view of the different documents that have been prepared for COP4, uh, in view of the interventions made at COP4.1 um, and the consultations uh, that have been agreed to, parties may wish to uh, base their uh, preparation of uh, written comments and considerations also on the three documents outlined below. The one is 418, the overall secretariat document on giving effect to Article 22. There is also 428, that is the meeting report uh, of 4.1, and lastly, the CRP. And then you see on your right-hand side of the slide um, some golden boxes. And broadly speaking, these are some of the baskets or elements or areas uh, that are probably part of uh, what written comments would be most useful on uh, for parties to be able uh, to come together on those elements that they have not yet uh, been able to achieve consensus on to give full effect to Article 22. I read them here, not in any particular order, but just to peak um, a form of um, um, brainstorming or a form of uh, uh, information collecting, and that is firstly on a draft decision. There would have to be a draft decision uh, coming forward um, on the schedule and the timeline of the first effectiveness evaluation. Also, there would have to be a, a, an agreed approach on the steps required and the process. And there would also need to be an agreed approach on the draft terms of reference for the committee developing the effectiveness evaluation. Uh, the arrangements to provide the COP with comparable data, monitoring data for the effectiveness evaluation, and overall that comes together uh, as a framework for the first evaluation of the effectiveness uh, of the convention. With that, I would like to conclude and just to say that we would be delighted to receive written comments by Thursday, the 20th of January, 2022. Um, and just also to say that we have modeled this plan of approach very much on the uh, consultations um, that we had been mandated to do in which you supported as parties on uh, the work on indicators. In other words, to first have, like we do today, an information session for clarifications and information sharing, then a time to prepare um, contributions um, also then an access to each other's contributions and thereafter the opportunity to engage with each other on your contributions or any other parts uh, that are useful for the consultations and then for the secretariat to uh, compile the contributions in a way that would hopefully be useful to your further deliberations at COP 4.2. There are some details here, which includes also that in terms of written comments, they can be general, they can be very specific. Uh, we hope that they are able to be as helpful to yourselves and each other in this conversation. And may I also say that we would also be very open as a secretariat to have any of your comments or reflections on the conduct of the consultations, even your advice. Um, so that uh, we can be of best support to you in this consultation in preparation of being in Bali together. With that, I would like to conclude the Secretariat's presentation. Maybe we just go back two, part, two steps, uh, shall you fool, in terms of the two slides back, in terms of the... Yes, thank you very much. Maybe we stay here. Um, while I uh, look to see if we have any uh, comments or questions or initial reactions coming from 
our audience today. If you wish to have, if you would like to take the floor, please raise your hand. Or if you would like to see a slide again or have another explanation of something uh, you've seen before, I'd be happy to go back to that. Or if you would like to uh, record your question or uh, comment or clarification need in the chat, please feel free to doing so. I do see two hands and the order in which they appeared to me, I will call them. The one is Liz Nichols and the other is Susan Keane. And so may I perhaps call on Liz first? Um, please, you have the floor. Liz from the United States, please. I think we just wanted to, to maybe break the ice by expressing appreciation for the Secretariat for, for organizing this entire plan of work for, for the final movements towards this effectiveness evaluation in, in its first uh, iteration. And, and especially appreciation for today's session and the additional consultations to come that are intended to clarify these remaining areas of work on the framework. Um, it, to us, it is quite clear that the, the elements of the framework that will receive discussion and hopefully adoption at uh, COP 4.2 are found across these three documents, 418, 428, and CRP 1, as well as, of course, any further proposals that may be received on this topic. Um, we will be happy to submit detailed views on all of these elements before January 20th, and, and those are likely to include views on the process and the reports and the timeline as laid out in Annex 1 of the CRP1, um, as well as likely to have views on the terms of reference for, for the Effectiveness Evaluation Committee and the Scientific Advisory Group found within that CRP1. Um, so I, I don't think we need to go into greater detail now, but just wanted to, to perhaps end by saying that that the approach to to all of this seems to us to be quite sensible and um, to be inclusive. We appreciate the the efforts to initiate a global conversation on this topic, and we we hope and we believe that this can help better prepare parties to conclude on this when we first meet in person in Bali at long last. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we also hope that um, given we realize that uh, much slows down in the world calendar wise at this uh, time and that there may in fact uh, be also some uh, delays amongst uh, some parties to uh, to come together on all of or amongst each other or within their own context about these consultations. But uh, we sincerely hope that by the end of January, not only for uh, the country that just spoke, but for the others, that it is indeed feasible to provide whichever comments uh, are possible. So my thanks uh, to, to you for um, explaining also or giving a bit of guidance also further in terms of what you were having in mind. And we very much look forward to your engagement. Um, I see one other hand and I also see um, a chat question. So may I first call on Suzanne Keen um, and then we can go to the chat question. And please feel free to really record any question, even if it may be uh, a question um, um, that may have been asked before and you'd like to clarify it again. It, and please feel free to use this opportunity now. And I'd also like to especially call on those that might not have been involved or might not be so close to this work yet. Um, if there's anything we can uh, draw uh, out more in today's session, uh, we would be extremely happy to do so. But um, let me first uh, call on Susan and uh, Shariful. I think you are able to ensure that Susan uh, can unmute herself. So over to you, Susan. 
Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, thank you for allowing me to take the floor briefly. Um, I, I agree with Liz's comments that this is a very clear and straightforward process. My only question is about uh, this particular slide that you're displaying, which is, you know, identifying, I believe you characterize this as the areas on which um, these are issues where consensus has not yet been reached, um, and which is the mandate uh, that was given under 4.1. I'm wondering that these are still quite broad areas. Um, and I know that the consultations during co the in-person consultations in COP3, um, as well as subsequent um, intercessional work, um, did uh, un unearth uh, more detailed areas of disagreement, or I shouldn't say, you know, for areas that needed further consultation, let's say. Um, and I wonder um, to really accelerate the process and making sure that 4.2 is a very, you know, robust discussion. If if there's a if there is any um, means by which the Secretariat could identify uh, or just uh, summarize maybe some of those highest priority or highest uh, um, most discussed issues um, so that the comments could really focus um, on those particular areas and really just unearth and, and, and raise, um, make sure everybody has a chance to really put down what their view is on these most um, sensitive um, issues uh, so that the 4-2 can really hit the ground running um, to talk about those. I, I just fear these very broad um, issues that are identified in this slide could really uh, create quite a, a very diluted um, written comments document and it'd be very helpful to have a more concentrated one in my my view thank you thank you susan i have always appreciated your clarity in in uh, approach so let me uh, clarify two parts the one is that um everything you see here displayed in these golden boxes are areas which were not mandated under 310, decision 310 for further work. In other words, much work has gone on on a draft decision prior to COP4, in other words, in preparation of COP3 and also during COP3. Much work has been present, has uh, been done and uh, perhaps even completed on the schedule and timeline of uh, an effectiveness evaluation. And the same as the other items that uh, are mentioned here. However, none of those items except uh, in part uh, one were mandated for work, uh, for further work uh, between COP3 and COP4. So my comment was more to focus that these are the areas of work that did not appear in COP uh, decision 310 uh, to uh, bring more clarity on in the meantime, but they have been some of the uh, areas of work that some of the informal consultation have tried to bring more clarity forward. So in essence, uh, just to recall the COP3 uh, in its decision 310, while it welcomed the framework for the first effectiveness evaluation, it did not speak more to the particular components or elements of that framework. Instead, it called first on parties to uh, provide their views on the indicators, and that process was conducted between COP3 and COP4 and is reflected partly in the document 418, but also in the addenda one to that document and in INF 11 that uh, supports that document. Secondly, that decision also requested advancing work on draft guidance uh, on monitoring to support effectiveness evaluation. And again, that work was uh, advanced uh, with the help of parties, with the active involvement of parties and experts, and is detailed in the same document 418 and addenda 2. And furthermore, there was also other work mandated, um, firstly, on uh, national reports through the so-called uh, Article 21 synthesis reports, and secondly, also on the topic of trade, supply, etc. So those areas COP has spoken on. But on these other areas that you see here, COP has not yet spoken uh, on uh, in terms of its conclusions. And thus they are here as part of the items that uh, need to be 
uh, concluded as the COP sees fit at COP4 and going forward uh, so that the first effectiveness evaluation can be begun and can also be completed by the time COP uh, would like to do so. So um, thank you for asking me that question so that I could clarify that it's not meant to signify that each of these boxes that you see here are completely contested or are completely un um, manageable in terms of uh, finding a joint way forward. It is rather that elements in some of them have not been concluded um, and they would need to be part of what COP 4.2 uh, also looks at in the way it sees fit. And these consultations are part of trying to ensure parties could hear each other in preparation of going into 4.2 and could also um, uh, show uh, the items that in the meantime have perhaps become more important to them or perhaps a little bit less important, uh, however the party would, would see its way forward. May I also just say that, of course, I use the language and it, it, uh, it might refer also to the chat question that this is a consultation for parties. Um, it is, in fact, uh, just a point I maybe would like to make a small uh, sidebar comment on, which is that um, there has been much extremely helpful input of many, many experts over all of these years. And it has been enormously rich and enormously helpful in the making documents that you still have access to and that you could still fall back on and recall in the way you see fit. So this is uh, not so much uh, necessarily a need for um, only fixing something through expertise, but hopefully more so a consultation so that parties may be able to understand each other's perspective on an item better to be able to be best prepared for the important conversations that will happen at 4.2. Um, and furthermore, lastly, uh, Susan, you asked about having some um, perhaps better way of landing on the key items inside of these boxes. This is really very much from the Secretariat's point of view, having now followed this process with parties, uh, accompanied parties on this um, on this journey. Um, we really feel that for COP 4.2, that there are many um, uh, aspects to call upon that are almost ready uh, for the COP to uh, to make decisions on and to um, look at what you have as parties in front of you and put together what you need to, in fact, uh, give effect to Article 22. In other words, we probably don't believe that much more extra work needs to be done. It is more a matter of COP being able to uh, stand back and look at everything that has been put together and find its best, most pragmatic way forward uh, to uh, to adhere to the deadline that parties had set themselves as they were agreeing to this convention. Um, if I may leave this here, but I would like to just go back to a question I see from Emil, which is, can non-state actors be involved and engaged and contribute to the consultations? Yes, uh, Emil, the short answer is yes. Uh, you will notice that the executive secretary notification uh, went to all parties, it went to all observers, and for sure these consultations are not closed. Um, while it is a matter for parties to be able to engage with each other and use this almost extra time that we have because of this two-step COP process, while it is important that they are able to find the space to hear each other, to read each other's perspectives and to engage with each other, um, other stakeholders are absolutely welcome to be part of, uh, of these consultations. And indeed, the 20th January um, deadline is also a deadline by which other stakeholders uh, may, if they wish, provide their comments as well. Um, let me check if I see any other specific question. Um, 
I see a question from Egypt, and I wonder if um, Mr. Elam Rafat Abedazi would like to take the floor to ask that question. Sharifel, could you unmute uh, Ms. Elam, or shall I read the question? Um, Claudia, she should uh, like raise her hand, then I can unmute her. Oh, of course. Ms. Elam, can you raise your hand? If not, we can come back to you in a second, as I do see two other raised hands, or we'll reach out to you in the meantime um, for that. But in, ah, I'm sorry, it actually was, uh, she actually answered. Thank you, Elam. Um, just to raise this question before I go to the next two parties that have raised their hands. Uh, the question from um, Egypt is Article 22, the effectiveness evaluation is very important to understand mercury management con um, situation in countries. And may I just take one moment just to make one clarification between what Article 22 tries to achieve and what some of the other articles in our convention try to achieve and were built for. Um, mercury management is indeed part of all of the control articles of our convention and indeed um, there are many different uh, um, avenues through which that is important and through which countries are able to look at internally at their own mercury management and also to understand how this uh, sets itself up in terms of the global context. Um, the evaluation, the effectiveness evaluation is something like a meta-analysis of all of that. Um, so it is uh, something perhaps at times to reflect upon in terms of how an effectiveness evaluation is set up. It is not per se a monitoring of mercury management. It is the overall uh, effectiveness of the a convention as it's set up to achieve its objective, which is to safeguard persons and the environment from the harmful effect of mercury. But indeed, um, as our convention's articles are very related, um, this is all part of the overall journey. With that, may I may I turn to Mr. Torabi from Iran. Um, Shariful, you could help me unmute. Mr. Torabi, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Claudia, and thank you, Secretariat, for arranging this very fruitful meeting. Uh, I have three points to raise. First, uh, regarding setting uh, 20th, 20th of January 2022, and uh, also uh, February regional meetings. Uh, I wanted to know uh, on, the, on which uh, th those meetings have been decided based on the decision of Bureau or it is a proposal by the Secretariat. Because we have not received any input uh, or a request for comment from the Bureau on those uh, two meetings. My second question is about uh, regional meetings before uh, in-person uh, COP, uh, in -person COP of Bali. Uh, we don't know whether it will be held or no. Uh, if you can clarify, I'll, I would appreciate regarding that. And uh, my third point is uh, regarding uh, CRP of Norway and Canada. Uh, our assumption is that uh, there will be uh, opportunities for other parties and countries to make uh, uh, their own proposal before uh, in-person COP. Is it correct or no? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Torabi, for very practical questions and uh, comments. May I start just quickly on the regional meetings? Indeed, and Shariful, if I may ask you just to go back to the calendar view of the plan of work, just so that uh, we all have it in front of us. But indeed, the um, the proposal by the Secretariat is, and we are making provision for that, uh, but it will be um, uh, put to the Bureau that meets in early January. Uh, to confer on this, so my slide should have been a TBC slide, 
but there you see that regional preparatory meetings are planned for uh, the 7th of February, 8th of February, 9th and 11th of February, as well as 10th of February uh, for the respective regions. These meetings in these day, or over these days in February are intended to be online preparatory meetings, much like the online preparatory meetings we had before 4.1. But in addition, um, we are also making preparations. Again, this is to be uh, this is to be uh, presented to the bureau, and um, uh, it is in part uh, in response also to the needs we heard during COP 4.1 that we support um, in-person regional meeting front to the front, back to back with the actual meeting in Bali. Um, I do not have right now the absolute details in front of me, but we as a secretariat are preparing um, in-person regional meeting for all regions uh, in Bali at the beginning or before the start of COP 4.2. The details would uh, would be communicated to you as soon as, uh, as feasible. Um, those meetings would be um, in person and all of this of course is uh, as we are very working very closely together with indonesia to uh, work towards an in-person meeting that allows as many uh, as possible to come in safety together in bali to conduct 4.2 um, and then i i would like to uh, uh, just refer also to CRPs um, and um, just to say that, of course, uh, as is custom in any uh, such setting, uh, it is for parties, uh, it is at parties, um, uh, it is for parties to decide if they would like to put forward conference room papers or alternative proposals or proposals that that build on other proposals, however it uh, seems most feasible and practical for parties. And so, of course, uh, if there is still additional uh, material coming forward to be used at COP 4.2, such additional proposals uh, could become CRPs for COP 4.2. Let me also just say that conference room papers, the conference room paper one, which, which came forward during the course of 4.1 is still valid uh, going into conference uh, 4.2, but of course, if there are more proposals coming or any other uh, CRPs, even on comp of course, and other topics too coming forward, they will just carry on with the numbering that we have for the overall COP meeting um, so that uh, there is coherence in terms of all of the topics that came forward to the fourth meeting, regardless of whether that was in the online session a segment in November or uh, in the in-person segment uh, early next year. And um, I hope that that responds to your questions, Mr. Torabi. And may I now uh, turn to Joel Omala from Norway, please, if you could unmute yourself or my colleague will ensure that you can. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Claudia. Um, let me also, from my part, thank the Secretariat for, for putting forth a very good process. We have no additional comments to it and, and from our perspective it, it looks very good and we very much look forward to engaging with, with parties and, and look forward to reading uh, the written comments uh, that uh, will be provided. Um, I, I just had a, a, a small technical comment really um, in response to requests to help uh, non-party actors participate in the process and just you know because of our extraordinary circumstances here with uh let's say prolonged cop um perhaps also the crp1 could be made made available on on the website um i, I know it was circulated widely in in the <clears throat> uh, uh monica uh, uh, communication um, but to those that that haven't received it perhaps that is a way to uh, get into the more detail that also Susan was talking about. So just a practical suggestion and, and looking forward to engaging with all the parties uh, in the upcoming consultations. Thank you. Thank you very much to you and indeed your, your comment is very valid. And so may I just, um, we will make sure it is um, actually on the front part of our website, but just to say it is already um, reflected under intercessional matters on our website. In other words, 
for those of you that have been following the intercessional process on effectiveness evaluation, you will have seen the work there under indicators, guidance, etc. But there is also a new section now that we've come out of 4.1 and in preparation also of this information session where um, the outcome of 4.1 is detailed and also access is given there to the CRP that is already uh, uh, on our uh, that is already among us uh, on this topic. So it is it is there, but Joel, your, your point is valid that it needs to be very uh, accessible and easy. All the material has to be very accessible and easy to see uh, for those that that are uh, part of uh, the, uh, that are following the process. Um, we will also we would also um, um, perhaps uh, link um, we would also, um, I beg your pardon, we would also make another link to the meeting report so that those that may want to reread or refresh uh, on uh, the exact discussions at 4.1 on this agenda item, um, or they would like to look at it because they were not able to be part of it. And so we will also, in addition to this material, make sure that report uh, 428, document 428, the report on 4.1 is accessible there as well. Um, if I may, I note that we have four minutes left. Um, is there perhaps another question? I do note that there's a question about having um, resource persons to assist in writing reports. Um, may I, uh, just to ensure I understand the question, if this is a matter about the reports that would be written for the effectiveness evaluation on the basis of which the committee or the COP will make its further deliberations. That is all part of the discussions on Article 22 and giving effect to that uh, discussion. So yes would be the answer very much. It's been part of the considerations towards this. If it is a question on whether uh, a party may need some extra briefing from us as a secretariat, uh, on this matter so that they could uh, be well set to prepare written comments uh, for the consultations or to be better informed on something maybe they had not been following in detail, then please reach out to us as a secretariat so that we could um, we could give you an extra briefing or point you to um, any of the briefing materials we have already made available or to update you on any of the past work that has, a, has been done. So um, if it is indeed for uh, helping parties to respond to this invitation to send written comments and you need some extra clarification or you would like an extended part of your team to be better informed, please reach out to us and we shall try to, to help you in that regard. And if I may use this opportunity just also to, because I didn't do so at the beginning and uh, I neglected to do so, just to also introduce, of course, that um, this work is, is, is very much also supported by my colleagues, uh, both Esa Kutoda, who many of you have worked with for a very long time, of course, but also my colleague Manuela Marina, who uh, has a, a lot of experience in these kind of processes and in convention processes. And um, so we would all be extremely happy to help you if you need uh, to show you to some of the past work done or some of the past documents that may be helpful uh, or in any other way for you to feel that you can be part of the consultations. Um, and I look if there is some other questions related to effectiveness evaluation. I, I don't see a question on effectiveness evaluation, um, but I thank you for, for attending today. I do see a question related to other work, and if I maybe just uh, end with, um, with a general uh, comment and a general pitch, which is that today is the 15th of December, and we look forward to all parties completing their national reports by the end of the year, the national reports for the full reporting cycle is due by 31st of December. We have been extremely um, happy to see a lot of activity in the online reporting system by many, many, many of our parties. 
Um, here and there, there's a party that might uh, be experiencing some delay or some worry, and would like to uh, in, um, uh, invite you to please reach out to me or any of our colleagues uh, to help you if you need uh, any help in this task. Reporting is a very important obligation of the convention, but it's also at the end of the day part of the journey that is being taken under effectiveness evaluation. Um, and therefore, we would uh, be very happy to support you if you need any help uh, to meet the deadline at the end of this year. And if there are other um, uh, questions also, please feel free to drop us uh, a direct line. Um, we know that not all countries are parties yet, but we are very excited to know that they are following the processes this closely. And we already have some future parties that will be that have ratified, but uh, will only be party by 4.2, which we look forward to very much. And any other parties that are uh, not yet quite ready, but they are working on Mercury matters, um, we'd be happy to speak to you bilaterally to try to support you on your journey and to be part formally of the Minamata family as soon as feasible. With that, I, I remain um, with Cynthia. Thanks to you for your, your time and attention to us today and to this important topic. And on behalf of the entire Secretariat, wish you um, all good wishes towards the end of the year for this uh, season, for your health, for your joy and your prosperity. Um, please be in touch if we can help you in any way. And looking forward to taking you to the next step of this journey. Thank you very much and goodbye.